Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. We're gonna drop a challenge on you today, and that is, can you maintain your ability to breathe under a very simple condition that we see a lot of while we're all in sheltering in place, and that is called the plank. So one of the things that we try to do is we try to use the language of sports, training, a universal language that everyone speaks. Let me give you an example. When I have I've taught on every continent except Antarctica, when I say push-up, everyone knows exactly what I mean. I don't have to explain it. Everyone knows what a push-up looks like. So it turns out, we ha like sign language, we actually have a universal language of movement, and it's called the formal movement of exercise, right? Or chaturanga, or getting up off the ground, or whatever you want to call it. In this case, we're going to call it push-up. So we see a lot of people in the top position of the plank, and there's a lot that can go on here. But what I want you to appreciate is that we choose positions that allow us to maintain access to our physiology or to, to our capacity. So, for example, I can get into a plank position here, right, and you're thinking, hey, you're killing it. I can do this all day. But you know what I can't really do in this position? I can't really squeeze my butt. But if I choose a position that gives me good access to that, boom, I've got good butt squeeze here. So I'm not saying the other position is bad, or that other position where I'm a little lost that extension relationship is effective or ineffective. I'm sure you can do that for long periods of time. But what you're practicing is a position where you can no longer scale that up. So one of the things we're trying to work on is choose positions that give me access to increase load, increase speed, increase capacity, right? And being able to squeeze my butt is going to be crucial if I suddenly have a larger load or I start to fatigue and I'm going to have to recruit more musculature to keep myself in this mid-range position, which is one of the reasons we train this. Now, what we've seen on the sort of the last 10 years is that we have become obsessed with training the trunk and maybe, maybe it's not working quite the way we want, but we still value that I should have a position that I can maintain the integrity of and building that mid-range capacity of being more neutral, more mid-range where I can still take a breath and squeeze my butt is still going to transfer these other, other shapes more effectively, right? And it's part of the training language. So here's the deal though. What we see is that people are getting better at these shapes. We're seeing better widespread use of more sort of body weight, functional movement, real kind of formalized movement training in gyms and in, and in fitnessing, but we're still missing the ability to maintain our capacity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to breathe in this position. And I don't mean casually. So we know what it looks like to create that 100% breath. But now we're just gonna challenge that breathing. And so instead of going by time and who can suffer the, the most in this position, this plank challenge for you guys is your goal is to see if you can hold two minutes in this plank position while holding on to that idea of the 90% breath. So let me re reiterate, if you're on your back and I had you take the biggest breath in you could, initiating through the nose, belly expands, rib cage expands, chest expands, that's 100% breath. So if I'm in a plank position, what I'm trying to do is get as close as I can to that 100% breath concept. So in this shape, I've got to be able to see if I can get to 90% or the rough idea of that 90%, the analog for that 90%. And notice all of a sudden I have these huge loads going on in my spine. I'm, I'm, my body is trying to extend and I'm having to put in a flexion counter load to maintain that position, right? That's what we're doing in these plank positions is we're actually adding just extension to the spine and we're making ourselves resist that extension force on the spine. Okay, what's interesting though is I'm interested in as this demand through the spine comes up, I'm gonna have to breathe in my chest, my ribs, my upper back, I'm gonna have to see a lot more collateral breathing movement. This is why if we just only could diaphragmatic breathe our whole lives, there'd be no problem, but guess what? Even though my trunk is stiff, and I'm still initiating, I can't take a huge belly breath here, otherwise I'll collapse and fall apart and my belly's gonna turn off and my spine will fold, especially under load, speed, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm interested in is can I breathe in all those other places? And what you're gonna find is that most of us are getting into this position and we're falling apart. So your goal is to see if you can hold this position and still be hitting that 90% breath. And what I'm looking for is, 
Can you expand on the side? Can you expand between your shoulder blades? Are you feeling your belly increase a little bit as you're breathing into that stiffness? You should be expanding in a 360 here. So your drill is to maintain the biggest breathing you can in that shape for as long as you can. Now, if I just say go for two minutes, I know you're gonna do it. But what I'm interested in, you being able to appreciate that you've lost your breath volume, and when that happens, put your knee down. So see how far you can get, and if you start to lose your breathing volume, put your knee down, reorganize yourself. So this position before, where I was in this plank and my butt was turned off, it's hard to breathe in this shape, which is one of the reasons I know it's less effective. Why? Because my, I can't squeeze my butt and I can't take a breath. Turns out when I come more mid-range, head comes down, rib cage in, I have much better access to my ventilation capacity. So once again, we can use ventilation as a qualitative marker to assess the quality of my positions especially when I'm working at home and I have the time and I'm not competing against someone in my gym. Who can outplank? Because when it comes to outplanking someone, I know you'll win. You'll just default to all your bony connections and hang on the meat until the clock goes off. But what we're losing is the opportunity to become more efficient breathers and stabilizers under tension. When you lose that feeling, put your knee down. Have one of your friends and family and co-inhabitants right now Put their hands on you while you're breathing. Are you expanding into their hands? Let's take this moment and upgrade our plank with breathing. You got this.